I'm really glad that you all are here tonight. Um, we are on part two of Walk Through Our Faith series. Um, we're exploring tonight what makes someone Jewish and what makes someone Christian. Um, I am Reverend Anna Miller, and I am the associate past one of the associate pastors here at River Road Church Baptist, and I am serving mm -hmm. as host for this meeting. Um, I want to welcome our panelists. We have Reverend Dr. Theodore Brown from Cuyahoga Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Daniel Glaze from River Road Church Baptist, and Rabbi Hal Shevitz of Congregation Oratid. I also want to welcome everyone who's attending. Um, there are members from these three faith families, as well as guests who are connected to them in various ways. And we are really glad to have all of you here this evening. I hope that you all are ready for a wonderful evening and let's pray together as we begin. Our God, we thank you so much that you are a God that wants to be known, that you want to relate to us as your children. And we thank you that you desire that your heart and purposes would be alive in us. You know that we try sincerely to love and serve you. But God, perhaps we could do so much better and even more as we come together. As we overcome division, as we unite for your purposes. Through our budding relationships as three congregations, we pray, God, that you would grow in us curiosity that you would grow greater understanding and that you would grow a sense of calling to support one another and all of your children across the world, that we might be about your work of showing love, meeting needs, telling our stories and working for justice because we have experienced your mercy and love ourselves. Bless our sharing tonight and whenever we come together. Amen. 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 This evening, Dr. Brown is going to guide the discussion as the panelist, mm -hmm. and I'm going to turn mm -hmm. things over to him as I keep track of questions. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Once again, as I reiterate my initial um, statement, once again, want to thank you for actually leading us in devotions and giving our panelists tonight for our second week and opportunity for Q&A. Uh, I think tonight should be quite interesting. Um, this is our second event for Daniel, Howell, and myself. So we're learning as we continue to grow. And so we just praise God, the almighty God, for allowing us this opportunity for three communities to come together. I have a tremendous task tonight, but I take on the challenge to um, bring to you some similarities that Christians and the Jewish faith may have in common. And with that, I will just start off posing some questions to those just food for thought as far as to those who are from the two congregations. Um, when you think about the Son of God, what do you think about? the Son of God. And with that, do we as Christians and Jews look at God being the same God, the universal God that we serve? What are your thoughts as far as the hereafter, as far as is there a place for all of us after death? Tonight I will take my time. I feel a little more comfortable tonight compared to last week. Excited and still excited tonight as far as in the process in itself. What does Christ, um, Christmas mean to you in your family, in your household? How do you celebrate that? There are some similarities as far as when I go back to the origin of Christianity, I look at a lot of similarities because 
of Paul. I look at Peter and how the church began to develop and, and moved. Who were the first Christians? That's what I want to look into first before we move into that segue as far as what does Christianity mean to those who are out there tonight versus Judaism? What are some, what are some of the comparisons that the two individuals can come together as one? As I was reading earlier in one of the journals by C.E. McCartney, he gave a beautiful illustration as far as in the Boston Library, and some of you may have heard of this, um, the great mural painting as far as Christianity and Judaism by Sargent. At one end, he depicted the law, depict the law and the prophets in majestic splendor and a, no, and a noble array. At the other is a representation of the redemption. Also surmounting all are the colossal figures of the Trinity. The Trinity, as we look at it, as far as in the Christian belief, is dealing with the Godhead as far as God the Father, God the Son, and also God the Holy Spirit. And we call, call this the triune. And the triune is representing the Godhead, but I went all the way back and it took me to Religion 101 where Dr. Weaver Williams was the religious studies professor at Virginia Commonwealth University. She happens to be Southern Baptist. And of course, in some denomination as far as the Southern Baptist Church, women aren't allowed to preach in the pulpit. And so that's the difference in some of the Baptist churches, the Southern Baptists, which some call fundamentalists. And then you have some Baptists who believe in liberation theology like myself. But with that going to that, I had to go all the way back to the um, henotheism and Zoroastrianism and how basically Judaism could have stemmed out of Zoroastrianism. And, and Zoroastrianism was supposed to be part of a multiple of little gods. And then you had your big god, the god of Zoroastra. And with that Christianity had a lot of influence as far as stemming out of Judaism. That's the sim similarity. How did that come about? Well, that could have came about as far as the Christians do believe in the Old Testament reading itself. And they believe the prophetic stories that was going to come, that the Messiah was going to come, which is Jesus. How did Christianity exist? It used to have the coin word, the way. The disciples would consider the followers. And so with that, what we find is that Jesus is pretty much the author when it comes to the Christian teachings itself, because he was a teacher. And so with that, what does it mean as far as being, as far as a Christian, as far as in today's walk of ours? I look at being a Christian as um, a lover of God. Um, a lover of someone who gave unconditionally. I look at as far as we get into next week, as far as loving our neighbor as ourself. And this is why the three of us have come together <laughs> as far as trying to bridge that gap, as far as uh, the racial differences that we all have, the different perspectives that we have in different cultures about who we are. And then I, I look at it, can we love our enemies? And we're supposed to love our enemies as we what? Love ourselves. And in the Christian movement, we believe in the forgiveness of sin. And so forgiveness of sin is really big in 
the Christian movement itself. And we understand that Jesus is the Messiah and he was given the authority to forgive, forgive others. And that's why we truly believe in, in Christ. The repentance is also essential in itself. There might be some questions that's out there in that chat and Daniel and how you can chime in at this time to continue to share. And, and you can go all the way back to the first century if you want to, to bring us to where we are. And, and this is where we are to listen to our participants and also to um, our other two fine gentlemen that can share as far as the comparison. Yeah, thank you, Theodore, for, for offering that. Um, for, for me, to, to be a Christian, uh, we, we will often use this language, a follower of Christ. Uh, so for me, that is, it, to, to be a Christian is, is to be an imitator of the person of Christ, and, and I believe, to believe in his divinity. Um, I'm sure we will talk about that because that is, right there is, um, has, has been argued and fought over. Um, we're not going to fight over it tonight, but we are going to discuss that, <clears throat> the, the ways that we, that we approach Jesus. Um, and and I, uh, so, so for me, I think it's fundamentally uh, being a Christian is, is someone who uh, believes in God and, and just specifically the divinity of Christ, uh, of Jesus Christ, and, and seeks to follow in his way or imitate him. Um, to, to do the things that he taught us to do. And I believe to do it in community. Uh, for me, I, I don't believe, I believe it, it would be very difficult to be a Christian all alone on an island uh, because I, I believe our faith is lived out within community. And it, it should drive us not only to be in community, but, but service to others. Those are those are some of the things that are foundational uh, for me, um, and I. But I'm, I'd love to to hear more from the rabbi because I know I know there's there's a, a a huge cultural component as well as the faith component um, that that would go into being a person of faith from your perspective. Yeah. So so this is one of those places where um, I, I think there is the greatest, one of the greatest divergences in um, our similarities um, and our uses of vocabulary, really. Um, and um, because the, you know, the, the, vocabulary, the vocabulary that you're using and the frame which you are using is, is not the way we frame being Jewish at all. So being Jewish, um, is a matter of primarily peoplehood, primarily belonging. Um, and, um, and I would say that the, the, you know, um, you know, I'm going to say something that's going to sound very strange. Judaism is not a religion, right? Judaism is not a religion. Um, and, one of the reasons or, or, or a major component of that is the way we talk about ourselves through the way we refer to ourselves. So, so if you go back to the Bible, all the terms for our people are in terms of nationhood. Am Yisrael, the people of Israel, B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, um, right? Uh, these are all uh, about about ethnic ties, familiar relationships, peoplehood, nationhood. Um, and um, the, and just to give you e even more of a, of, of a very, uh, even more specific, the word Israel is approximately 32, 3300 years old. The word Jew or 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 or, or Judahite or Jew of that something related that's about twenty five hundred years old. The word Judaism is about three hundred years old, and we didn't make it up. <laughs> right? So so the word Judaism is a word made up by um, by I guess 
scientists and, and sociologists in Germany in, 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 or in Europe in the, you know, the 16, 1700s to categorize um, people as, uh, to categorize a group of people as they were welcomed into in, in light, post-enlightenment society in Europe. So you are a German of the Mosaic faith. You are a, you know, you're a German by, by, by nationhood and you practice Judaism, or you're a Frenchman by ethnicity and, and nationhood and you practice Judaism. And that was a very new way of, of qualifying it. Now we have, we have taken on that word and, and used it as a, you know, Judy, cause everybody Judaism, but the word Judaism is, is kind of like a made up word. I mean, all words are made up, but like, it's a made up word that somebody else used to coin us like, so, and, 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 and what, we do. And so I would say that, that, right. So we don't say it's, it's much, it's much more common to say the Jewish people than to say the Jewish religion, right. Even me saying that sounds weird to, to me at least. Um, and so it's the frame of reference. I think is, is completely different. Um, and notice I didn't say anything about faith or belief in there. Um, and, and all of our, right. All of our, so, so, uh, more, uh, well-known 20th century rabbi Mordechai Kaplan, um, he, he framed Judaism um, the way he talked about it in three words, belonging, behaving, believing, in that order, in a very sociological kind of way. So belonging, we belong to a group, behaving, we believe, we, 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 we act out the norms of that group, and then we believe like the, 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 the norms, the actions, the, 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 the practices inform our beliefs. And so it works in, I think it works in a very different way, almost an opposite way from, from, from Christianity. Um, and so that's, I think that's a big misunderstanding um, that most Jews don't get. Right. Uh, in, in all honesty, um, uh, many Jews today in the modern in, 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 in America, um, right, because Judaism has become almost Protestantized in America um, um, in, in the way we practice. I mean, you think about a place like the state of Israel, the state of Israel is for the people of Israel. And the way Judaism is practiced is not as a religion, but as just the way the, the, that, that you live. It's part of the cycle of, and, and uh, part of the cycle of life. Um, and, and, and surely it is all built upon God's relationship with our ancestors without a doubt. But, um, but the way that we conceptualize things, or at least the way that, that our tradition conceptualizes things is that the practice and the belonging comes first and the believing, I mean, is informed by that. And, and, and so one of the ways that, again, that, that plays out is that we have copious amounts of legal material um, copious amounts of legal material about how to do, how, how, to, how to do this, how to observe this holiday, how to live your life in this way. What, what do you do when you get up in the morning? What are the stages of, that, a, that, a, that, a, that a traditional Jew does in the morning? We have very little the, theology, very, very little theological text up until like, you know, there was one in the Middle Ages, Maimonides wrote something about that, about belief in God, but he was an Aristotelian. Um, um, but we don't have Jewish theology till the 20th century. Right. So after 2000 years of Jewish thinking, all like theology just comes in in the 20th century. And that's because of the Protestantization of Judaism in America. Um, so, again, it's a very it's a very different way that we conceptualize things. Is, would it be safe to say, then, Rabbi, that um, your your particular belief as far as Judaism um, or being Jewish from the community itself is a coin word? But you mentioned something that that the movement that your culture have is not a religion per se, um, based on what you my mind my, my interpretation. Am I correct? Yeah, I think yes. Now, now you are most you are more so focused on the laws or the commands that are given to, as far as your way of living. Am I correct? Yes. 
Okay. And, and that's where we have some of the differences as far as in the Christian movement versus um, as far as in the Judaism, if I may say, correct? Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so with that, we, we believe in supporting the scripture itself as far as uh, dealing with the son of God itself. Um, as most know who may be a part of this panel, I mean, um, this panel tonight, and also our participant as far as those who are Christians, and we're all learning here, and I'm still learning also, as far as Christianity and Christians um, pretty much had a hard drive in teaching the differences as Paul was a Jew himself, and he learned from some of the best schools of thought. And I wanna go back to that word theology. I look at the word theology as the study of God. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I look at that as far as the study itself. And I, from my perspective, I think theology is very important to be able to do our exegetical studies to get a true meaning of our culture when I say, culture, I'm talking about the Christian culture itself. Um, even going back to non-Christians, maybe like Josephus, who was an eyewitness of the movement that was taking place. Mm -hmm. and, and with that movement, we saw where the first Christians going back were Jewish Christians, because this is who Jesus was doing ministry for. He was a very popular figure at that time and he was equipping his disciples also so so we know that there are some similarity there but the difference that i see circumcision comes into play um, as far as how paul speaks on on one being you know a christian versus a jew because of what the law required and i stand to be corrected here because um but this is what some of the scripture speaks on as far as with Paul. But Christians, once again, use the Bible to support the argument about who Jesus is. And I saw a comment as far as in the chat, as far as a young lady spoke about being Southern Baptist. And when I use the word fundamentalist, it's not to degrade as far as one's belief but I am open to interpretation. That's where the theology comes in at, as far as being open to interpret the word, um, especially with different translation itself. And, and that's where we become more verse. And then we're able, as far as my perspective as a Christian, to, be, to think outside of the box, because when we confine who God is and keep him in, that box, then, 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 then we cannot see the possibility because I use scripture that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. I want to use some supporting things and Daniel, you can chime in at any given time and you won't um, offend me at all, sir. As far as, uh, as far as, uh, Brown? yes. Before we get too far away from the conversation where we've been, there were a couple of questions that were asked that that yeah. um, went along with where we where we were in in your conversations. Yeah. Um, one was um, as um, people of people who are Jewish may not say that this is their religion. Um, so what do you say your religion is? I have seen it talked about as being Hebrew. What, how would you respond to that, Rabbi? That, that would be Rabbi. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, so Judaism, I mean, the, the, the standard answer is Judaism, um, right? And and so, I mean, just because that word is just a normative word now, like, what's your religion? Uh, Judaism, like, if, you know, um, and, and, and so, um, as I'm saying, like, you know, to, to really, you know, that, uh, get into it, that's, that's not a completely accurate word, but it's the word that, that we use here. Um, and what's, what's interesting is that 
that's as I was saying, that's a new phenomenon. Meaning, in the pre-modern era, wherever Jews lived, they were Jews as a people. Meaning, they were living in countries where, if they were living in France, they were French people and there were Jews. And if they were living in Tunisia, they were Tunisians, Arabs, and Jews. And if they were living in Russia, they were Russians and Jews. Right? It's not a distinction of of religion or faith, it's a, it's a distinction of ethnicity and peoplehood. Um, and the distinction of Judaism versus Christianity, right? To say French and Jew, to say Christian and Jew are very different things. And that's a modern American Protestant conception of identity. So, um, that, so that brings up an interesting point. And Theodore, I'd, I'm curious if you'd agree with me on this. So I I, I am not a Christian because my mother and father are. I, 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 now, I, I am a Christian because of their influence, but, but not just intrinsic to who they are. I, I didn't receive my Christianity from them. Um, I, it's, it's, uh, it, in, from my perspective, everyone chooses for her or himself the Christian faith. Um, in that sense, and Theodore, I'm curious if you would agree with me. In that sense, one might say all Christians are converts. <laughs> you know that that we because it's it's a it, it's a choosing of that faith. Um, curious, how, Theodore, if you agree, and and Rabbi, how how you might speak differently in in that. Well, thank you, Daniel. Uh, I believe in the confession of faith. What you're saying because it's a personal walk, it's a personal commitment. I would have to say in my personal setting, I was heavily influenced by the household as far as my grandmother being a Christian woman, uh, a Christian, but of another denomination. I chose to become a Baptist like you chose to become a Christian. And I chose that because I saw a difference in the comparison and I was more persuasive to become a Baptist as far as a Christian, more so than her particular faith. Um, and so that's good that you were led into what you heard. It was something that captivated you, I take it that, and, and I stand to be corrected, that was a light bulb that came on for your movement. Yes, but I, I think I, I would still say, it, it, for me at least, at the end of the day, I, I, I was in, influenced by people of faith all around me, but I chose, at some point, I had to choose the faith for myself. Um, Rabbi, how, how might you talk about, because I mean, a, a, I'm sure you'd talk about conversion or converts very differently than I am here. Well, so it, it's really interesting because... Um, so when one converts to Judaism, you join the people and faith of Israel, right? And, um, and so you're joining a people. Um, and, and one of the, the, the phrases that we, that, that we use, and one of the things I explain to, to converts, um, when I work with them is I go back to what Ruth says and Ruth says, your people shall be my people, your God, my God in that order. Right. And she, she phrases in that, in that, in that order. So I think it's very, very important. And, you know, when, you know, when I work with converts, um, I spend most of my time working with them, learning Jewish practice, learning the Jewish experience and living as a Jew. Only towards the end do I talk about, okay, here are the vast amount of Jewish understandings of God. Try to figure it out, <laughs> right? And, um, and, and so um, there's also, it's very interesting. There's also uh, a, a, a term used in the Jewish legal sources that when someone converts to Judaism, they become a Jew. When someone converts out of Judaism, they are called an apostate Jew, <laughs> Meaning, meaning you're still a Jew. You're just not a believer in the faith of Israel, right? So it's, it's interesting. We have some very interesting like so, lines that, so, and, and lines of distinction are very, are very, you know, very strange. So do I hear you saying 
for someone to, I hope I'm not misquoting you or, or, but would you, would you say that someone leaving the Jewish faith, you know, let's say a, a Jew converts to Christianity or whatever, they, they might leave the faith, but not the family. Is that well, so, or, or is that, I don't want to put too fine a point on it. No, no, no. They, they, I, I, so, so it, it's really complicated, especially because the person who converts probably doesn't count themselves as one, right? So if you convert to, a, if you're, if you're born Jewish and you officially convert to a different religion, you probably don't care about your Jewish affiliation anymore. Even so, Jewish tradition still considers you a Jew by um, by ethnicity and by birth. Um, like the person doesn't, I'm sure, doesn't care anymore. But 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 tradition still counts that um, still counts that person. Um, and so so it's right. It's 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 complicated. It's very complicated. Hmm. Yeah, that's our our chat is very active. It is. Let me ask you an, one other question that that I received, and and Rabbi, it came after you were talking about how um, that um, that you all belong and behave and believe. That it goes in that order. Um, there was the question: Can you be a Christian, an imitator or follower of Christ, and not believe in His divinity? Mm. Who wants to take that one? <laughs> um, I could be a little bit of a libertarian in faith matters. And I say, you know, if you call yourself a Christian, then, you know, but for, for me, part of part of the following in the way of Christ is is in believing his divinity. Um, and this may be a good place for us to say, and, and, and I want to don't want to just restate, but but do want to amplify something uh, Theodore said at the beginning that because it, it has been a point of contention um, that I think Christians still we still consider ourselves monotheists that that is we we believe in one God um, and and, and the, the Trinity is uh, is probably the most misunderstood or, or even I don't fully understand it. Uh, but, um, it, it's, we believe in a God that manifests in three ways, not in three separate gods. Um, but, but that's all not Jews per se, but, but others have said, well, then that's, you know, really three gods, but we can argue that till the cows come home. But so for, for, for us, uh, I believe Jesus is not a, another God, but simply part of our understanding of, of who God is. I did not explain all that very adequately, but there was there was some questions, I think, about, you know, how we would approach our own monotheism. <clears throat> well, that's, that is a great question that was posed pertaining to that. Uh, especially de dealing with the monotheistic approach um, as far as versus the polytheistic approach. And with that, I look at what the word of God says as far as God is love for the whole world. But at the same time, I look at the gift that God gave to creation. And in Christianity, I look at that ultimate gift that God gave to the world. And that gift was his only begotten son and that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That triune that we are speaking of, the Trinity itself, I still go back to there is nothing too impossible for God. And that God can manifest God's self into the flesh like he did to his son. And so with that, I believe also as Jesus spoke to his disciples and he told them that I will not leave you comfortless. I truly believe what that scripture says and, and that's the Holy Spirit. I believe that without the Holy Spirit for me as a Christian, I have no power. 
And I believe in that utterance of the spirit of God, the presence of God in me. And the just, that's where the Trinity comes to me. Um, I believe that, that we have that eternal place. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus is that divine being that walked this world, that he came into a chaotic situation, that he knew of uh, sin. And that not only did he know of sin, but he didn't commit sin. I believe he was that prime example for the Christian walk, that that movement itself, it grew. Um, that people saw signs and wonders of what Christ could do when he walked this earth over 2000 years ago. I believe that they still see that today, today through the aid of the Holy Spirit itself. I believe that um, we have the power as Christians, those who believe that, that we can actually pray over our brothers and sisters and they can be healed and they can recover. Mm. And that's the power that I believe as a follower of Christ as far as a part of the way. So that's a, that's a really interesting point. And so I, I think, Theodore, you're speaking my language too. The, the, for us, the centrality of the person of Jesus Christ is, is foundational to our faith. Um, Rabbi, how, how would you, the, the, the concept of Messiah, um, would, would you place that central in your own faith or is that, we obviously do, yeah. um, how, how do you see that fitting into the, the larger mosaic of your faith? It's complicated. Um, so, <laughs> So it's probably the truest answer. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll say it this way. Um, um, for, I want to go back to, to, I'll answer your question in a moment. I want to go back to something um, um, that, 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 that was hinted on, but I, but I wanted to, to, to say this um, um, a, a couple points to, to answer, to, to respond to some, some thoughts that, that I had. Um, do we pray to the same God? I've gone back and forth about this for a while. And right now I'm sitting in a place where I would say yes, but we relate to that God in very different ways. Um, as, as opposed to, right. So, so the, the, the word Israel means struggle with God. We struggle with God. Um, being a Christian, you believe in God and God's manifestation is Jesus. Um, Islam, they submit to God. That's the, that's the name of the meaning of the word Islam. And so we, we struggle with God. Um, that's what we do. And, and we have this sometimes adversarial relationship, sometimes, sometimes loving relationship, um, all sorts of, uh, you know, in, in every relationship, there's, there's multiple emotions that, 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 that you, that you experience. Um, I would also say kind of tongue in cheek, Jews believe in one God or less. Um, <laughs> I would say anything, right? Can't be more at one God or less. Um, and how that manifests itself, I think, is a very personal conversation um, with with God. And and as far as Messiah goes, um, the one of the 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 great um, conflicts is that I think. I think Paul changed the definition of Messiah, right? I think, mm -hmm. I think Paul, like, because Jewish texts, uh, you know, the, the Bible doesn't necessarily speak about a Messiah per se. Um, it, and it speaks about a son of David and a return and, 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 and second temple literature had this idea about a Messiah and a Messiah really, a Messiah literally means anointed one, meaning one who will come and rescue the Jewish people and fulfill certain prophecies that were, that, that, that are in the, the, the scriptures. Um, and there's actually many different manifestations of the Messiah according to rabbinic literature. There's the Messiah ben Joseph, there's the Messiah ben David, there's different orders about when that might come. And, and the, the, you know, and so we have different definitions of what Messiah is. And I think that's an important thing to, to, to understand, um, right? 
our, you know, the, the, the traditional Jewish conception of the Messiah is, you know, a, an, an ingathering of exiles to the land of Israel, an end of, of suffering, um, um, sovereignty in the land of Israel, um, um, uh, which, which is brought about by a messianic figure, which is why I would actually call Zionism a messianic movement because it, 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 it proffered the, the in gathering the exiles and it's done a pretty good job of it. Um, except for all of us heathens who still live in America, um, and the, and the rest of the world. Um, but, but even so, um, I, I think that's a very important distinction. We have two different definitions of what Messiah is and means. And, and, and I would say that in the Jewish tradition, still Messiah is a very, the outcomes are very this worldly, meaning things, the, 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 the paradigms are going to change, but they're still going to fit in the context of how we understand the way the world works. And if, if I'm correct, that's not the case with Christianity, that when the Messiah comes again, right? First off, it's a different question. When's the Messiah going to come versus when's the Messiah going to come again, right? And so, right, when the Messiah comes again for Christianity, there's a, the, the, the paradigms of, of the world are going to radically change. Uh, and, and so I think we have to separate those two definitions. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's helpful. And I, I know we've, to, to, to go to another point, I, I know we've talked a lot about, you know, last week we talked a lot about similarities. This time we're talking about some differences. Um, I, I, I want to mention something you just, you said a couple moments ago, but it, it illustrates for me, I think just personally, a similarity, similarity that we should have, but Christians have lost. Um, and that is, the uh, w- w- our Jewish friends have a robust tradition of arguing with God, um, or or that that you talk about that adversarial relationship. Um, you know, how long, O oh Lord? <laughs> or, or or even that haunting. Uh, this is not exactly, but that haunting question. I think it's Exodus seventeen or so. The the is the Lord among us or not? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a very pointed and, and almost haunting question. Um, I will often hear Christians say, now, I know we're not supposed to question God. And, and then they'll usually then go on to question God. But and, and so I, w- I want to I say, well, why not? If, I mean, if, if God cannot take my questioning, then that's not too much of a God. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I just that just pops into my mind as, as you were talking. I thought that's something that I think Christians have let go of hmm. um, that that ability to. To have those hard questions with God and trust that our faith can not only come out on the other side, but may be strengthened in it. Hmm. Does that make sense what I'm getting at? Yeah. I like what you just said, Daniel, as far as towards the end. I think when we question God, it makes us even stronger in our faith because God knows our thoughts. He knows our ways. If we make our bed in hell, behold, he's there. We take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. God is still there. And I think a lot of times as Christians, we are afraid that we're going to offend God. But I don't think we can ever offend God as far as questioning God, especially when troubled times come, as far as a lot of us may have questioned God over 13 months ago, dealing with the pandemic crisis, as far as COVID-19, when half of the world was shut down. Why are we in this situation? Why did this virus come about? You know, why we have to go through all of this? Or when tragedy hit families, when you lose a loved one, things happen. And and some Christians will say, um, I shouldn't question God. I shouldn't be angry with God. God knows all all about our inner being anyway. So why not go ahead and just burst it out and, 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 uh, and be true to yourself? I think that's where the healing comes in as far as being true to yourself when you 
in questioning God. I know that I questioned God personally or myself constantly. There was a panelist, a participant that asked a question about um, for the three of us pertaining to sin. Mm -hmm. How do we look at sin? Uh, and then how do we look at it from the beginning of sin? And I just want to just start from the book of Genesis as far yeah. as with Adam and Eve, you know, as we recorded in the Old Test in the Old Testament, that um, sin came about, you know, from that 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 forbidden the garden itself, where they had dominion over everything. Why did they need to explore those options? And uh, sin plays a major role um, in in the Christian walk. Um, because we know that we serve a God that is a forgiving God, but I know that there are consequences when we sin. And so I want to hear from Rabbi as far as what role does sin play in the Jewish faith, in Judaism? Well, I, I, yeah, I think it plays a, a very important role. Um, I think we treat it very differently than, 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 than Christians do. Um, um, I, I would say that that in that we we don't see and have original sin. I, uh, our, our, our our interpretations of that story um, about the Garden of Eden and, and 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 the expulsion from Eden is not one about sin, but about living in the world, right? Like living in a world of consequence, um, as opposed to living in fantasy land. Um, and 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 so. Um, um, you know, sin is, is something that, you know, look, we, we know that God is a forgiving God. Um, you know, we, we dedicate an entire day, uh, Yom Kippur to reflecting on our sins and actually, um, you know, for, for, you know, there's a wonderful teaching in, tra in the tradition that says, repent one day before you die. <laughs> and the obvious question is, well, how do you know you're going to die? Well, there you go. Repent every day. Right. So, um, so, um, you know, and, and there are prayers that the traditional prayers that are recited every day about, about confession of sin and, and, and forgiveness. Um, and one of the um, really important things about uh, the, 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 the crucial things about uh, Yom Kippur is a wonderful line that says, um, uh, for sins against God, God atones. For sins against another human being, God doesn't atone until you make it right with that person. Um, and there is a long confessional in, in the, in the liturgy of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, um, and where, where, where we, we communally list a whole bunch of sins, um, uh, together as if to say, we have done this and to find ourselves in there and to reflect upon that. And what's so interesting is that those sins are not anything that, um, they're, they're not ritual sins, meaning we don't, we don't confess that we didn't uh, keep Shabbat to, to, the, uh, uh, to the fullest extent of, of its restrictions, right? That we, that, or or we, we, we don't confess that, 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 we, we ha we, that we had ham, right? We confess that we have lied to other people. We confess that we have stolen. We have confessed that we have cheated. Um, and, and so that, that is a prompt, right? So just saying it's not enough, but that's a prompt for us to make it right with others. Um, and, and so the, uh, and, and there, the, you know, I, I know that, that, that Jesus plays a central role in, in the Christian concept of sin. Um, but that, you know, that is certainly not any, you know, there, there's no, there's no other either intermediary or someone to bear our sins or, or, or the one who, who, who helps us do that um, in, 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 in that role uh, that Jesus plays. Um, so I was wondering if, uh, you know, to, to put that back on, uh, on, on you to say like, what, what, what is that specific role of, of Jesus in, in, in sin and, and forgiveness? Well, we don't have enough time, to, but th there is, there's, there's a long history of atonement theories, different theologies in, what what was intended and accomplished uh, on on the cross and in 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 terms of Jesus's um, taking of sin, uh, you know, all of that that sort of thing. Um, for me, I, I think it, in in die as I, I I will often say that that Jesus died for us that um, 
you know, our, our scriptures say, you know, that, that the, the wages of sin is, is death. Um, but, but we were not held account to that. And, and, uh, and Jesus himself took, took on death. And we understand that to be uh, not substitutionary at all. I, I don't, I, some, some people do, I, I, I don't believe that, but I, I do believe that in, in submitting to death, Jesus showed us just, just how much God loves us and that there is no limit to God's love and forgiveness. Um, that, um, oh shoot, that God's ha- chesed, the, uh, the steadfast love, um, there, there is no limit to that. And I'm not going to even quote any more Hebrew because I'll be embarrassed, <laughs> but, but that, that, um, and, and, and so not only do we receive that, but, but this is something that, that uh, Theodore talked about. Not only do we, do we receive the forgiveness, but Jesus compels us to forgive others. Mm-hmm. So there is, there is a confession to God, God forgives and, and, and we have a, we are compelled to forgive others. And I would like to add to that, Daniel, as far as the dealing with sin, um, because repentance is really essential for the Christian faith itself. And also, and just listening, just getting the comment of, of one of the panelists, that's not the panelists, but the participant, and they stated that we all are made in the image of God. I, I, I want us to just expound upon that for the next three or four minutes, then we want to um, um, turn it back over to our presenter because she's done a beautiful job giving us the opportunity tonight to showcase um, our Christian walk, this walk through this journey of our faith, um, the image. Uh, that we are a reflection of God. What is your take on this as far as uh, that if we're made in the image of God, then why do we have so many issues with um, our cultures coming together and people look more so on the outward appearance, more so um, internally? What what is that? um, Where do you think that originated from? Do you think that some group groups think that they are more superior than others, or what is it that they feel like they have the right to um, think they are in, in a sense? And I'll open it up to our panelists tonight. Mm-hmm. Don't everybody speak at the same time. You know, I, and I, I don't want to monopolize it, but I, I've often said that I, I believe you know, it's, it is humanly impossible it, it is absolutely impossible to, to meet another person not made in the image of God. In other words, it's you, I don't believe you will ever encounter anyone not made in the image of God. And, and that must have a bearing, I believe, in how we treat one another. So um, I am looking for a text because this directly answers your question. There's a, there's a wonderful, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful text. Um, I can't find it on such short notice. I know exactly where it is, but I can't pull it up. Um, basically it, it's, it's in the, um, it's in the Talmud. Um, and it, it says that, um, uh, several several d- different pieces of the same text, but one of which says that um, uh, in praise of God, because um, God, we, we compare God to um, to uh, someone who mints coins. The text compares God to someone who mints coins, and you have a person who mints coins, and every single coin looks identical. Right, you have a mint. You stamp it. Every every coin looks identical, but then you have God, who minted every human being in the image of the first human being, and yet we're all different. How amazing is that? Uh, that's what the text is, is basically saying. And um, and additionally, it's part of that same text. It says that you know why did cre- why did God create all of us from the first human being? Because, or so that no one could say, I'm better than you. I'm greater than you. Because we are all descended from that 
that original human being who, by the way, who's, who's creating the image of God. Right. So, so I, I, I think, you know, that, that, um, first off, God doesn't care what we look like because we are, we're all in the image of God. God likes diversity. Um, and, and any true, and any, any, any person who, who truly understands this as the will of God must see everyone as equal has to has to at least acknowledge that um um and so i i don't get it right <laughs> to answer your question i don't know we don't know we don't right. know right we don't know that is that's the million dollar question tonight and i'll turn it back over um to the great reverend as far as made in the image and the likeness of God. And I guess that's why the three of us have come together to build that community um, to see how we can relate because we have some similarities as far as in our beliefs. And, and with that, we're building our community for a better world. And I think it's needed more so today, regardless if I'm that black Christian Baptist versus Daniel and your your um, Judaism when it comes into itself. But how do we bridge that gap that our children can come together and join forces and that our community can really be like the original community that God wanted it to be? Mm -hmm. It may not happen in our lifetime, but this is a good starting point as far as this collaboration to continue to learn about each other culture. And I'm a really, really appreciative and humble um, that we can have this open dialogue. And I think it's needed even more and what a great setting it is to have it. And especially the participant asking good, legitimate questions tonight. And so with that, um, thank you, um, Dr. Glaze and thank you, Rabbi Howe as far as um, just joining in tonight. And tonight I'll turn it back in because there might be some additional questions um, that might the participants might want to share. One question that um, was asked some time back about if someone, if a child is born to a father it's Jewish and the mother is not, is the child considered to be Jewish? Um, so I will put that out to you, Rabbi Hal. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you can't answer every question that way. Hal. That's the answer to every that. Jewish question. <laughs> um, so, so I'll say this um, um, in, 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 in the Bible, um, uh, paternity determined tribe um, and, and, and nationhood. Um, that, um, Barry Green, thank you, Sanhedrin 4.5. I found it in my text after I stopped at Barry Green, uh, right, Sanhedrin 4.5 in the Mishnah. Um, I found that text. Um, anyway, so, um, um, so in the Bible, paternity determined tribe and nationhood. Now that, that swapped in the Roman period um, where motherhood determined um, uh, 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 a, a tribe and nationhood. Um, and it was actually based in some Roman law about maternal inheritance, very, very complicated stuff anyway. Um, and so being born of a Jewish mother, you know, uh, determined your, your, your faith. Um, and so then you get into the issue of, well, what if somebody's born of a, of a, of a Jewish father and a, a non-Jewish mother? Um, and the answer for, 2000 years was you're not Jewish. Um, and in the eighties, um, I'm talking 30 years ago in the eighties, um, the reform movement and then later the reconstructionist movements, um, again, all, all movements, all these, all, all modern movements practice, practice Judaism relatively the same way. It's just that observance levels vary and, 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 you know, theologies and, and, and understandings of, of God very, but, but the, these movements decided 
um, that they would accept Jews born of a Jewish father and count them as Jews. Um, and so that made things very, very complicated because that meant that this rabbi would say you're Jewish and that rabbi would say you're not Jewish. Um, now, personally, I, I, I think it's, I think it's advantageous to all of us. However, I think the way it was done was actually not good because it created a really bad schism within the, you know, with, within, uh, especially American Judaism, um, that, you know, to, to unilaterally say, well, well, we're going to change the definition of who, who a Jew is, you know, that, that's, a, that's a really, that's a really big, big thing. Um, uh, somebody who walks into a synagogue is going to be considered a, a Jew in this congregation, but not in that congregation, very complicated stuff, uh, and, and very delicate stuff too. Um, so, you know, to, to go to, you know, to change the definition of after 2000 years without, you know, all unilaterally, uh, I don't think that was such a great move. Um, I would love everybody. I would love all, all Jews to, to count that way, but we have 2000 years of precedence and I would like, you know, if that's going to be the case, you know, you know, if such a, such a major change in who's a Jew is going to happen, I think, I think there, there, there needed to be a more broad based kind of conversation that happened to, 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 to think about that in a deeper way. Really interesting. Yeah. There were also many good comments that were made, um, clarifying comments even um, that, that um, went into a little more detail of things that you all were talking about, which I really appreciated. Um, you know, would love for everyone to know that, that um, hearing your thoughts like that is, is very helpful for all of us. Um, next week, we are going to be talking about what does it mean to be a neighbor with one another? Which as you were saying, Dr. Brown, that is a very important question, um, especially right now. Um, we may be changing our formatting some for next week in order to allow some conversation among all of us. Um, that seems like the neighborly thing to do. And um, we may begin with a question about when you were first aware of your own faithfulness or your own connection with God, um, which um, would be very interested in hearing from people of, of um, each congregation. I hope that you all will join us next Wednesday night at 7.30 for part three. And I thank you for being here this evening and for participating so beautifully and Wish you a blessed remainder of your week and weekend. Thank you, Dr. Brown, Rabbi Howe, Daniel Glaze. Thanks to all of you. <laughs>